Prehistoric Europe was absolute nightmare fuel. In fact, it's very possible modern humans butchered some Neanderthals and made necklaces out of their teeth and trophies of their skulls. Indeed, Neanderthals completely disappeared just 3,000 years after their population peaked around 45,000 years ago. It seems that Neanderthals and modern humans overlapped on and off for as much as 10,000 years in Western Europe. But in the last 2,000 years, Neanderthal population dropped rapidly. The nature of the replacement of Neanderthal by anatomically and behaviorally modern populations in Europe is currently a topic of lively debate in human evolution. Neanderthals appeared approximately 400,000 years ago. With significant intellectual weight, they quickly colonized the entire continent, peaking around 45,000 years ago. Then, at the pinnacle of their power, they vanished, seemingly out of nowhere. Although this has been known for some time, a new review research published in the journal Quaternary International reveals how quickly they became extinct. According to the study, researchers found that between 110,000 and 70,000 years ago, there were only four recognized settlement sites in what Germany, including the famous Neander Valley. In comparison, between 70,000 and 43,000 years ago, there were 94 Neanderthal villages. According to contemporary archaeological evidence in the region, they vanished from the scene only 1,000 years later. First and foremost, this disappearance, which ended in their species extinction 2,000 years later, is ludicrously rapid. What's more, this evidence shows that Neanderthals became extinct within a few thousand years after their population peak. Asking what killed the Neanderthals is to examine one of science's greatest mysteries. Our evolutionary cousins vanished nearly without a trace some 40,000 years ago, and there is no consensus on what irrevocably consigned them to the annals of history. The evidence shows that from 40,000 years ago, modern humans dominated Europe. Homo sapiens were equipped with distinctive tools and revolutionary weaponry. Is it a coincidence that modern humans arrived at the height of Neanderthal dominance in Europe, and then our evolutionary cousins went into a precipitous final decline? Probably not. One nightmare scenario occurred around 40,000 years ago, where a modern human in what is now France may have eaten a Neanderthal child and made a necklace out of its teeth according to a study that suggests Europe's first humans had a violent relationship with their muscular, big-headed, hominid relatives. The material, which includes teeth and a carefully butchered jawbone from Le Roy Cave in southwestern France, could be the world's earliest known archaeological proof of direct interaction between the two human populations. The study, published in the Journal of Anthropological Science, adds to a growing body of evidence suggesting Europe's first modern humans, known as the Aurignacian culture, used human bones and teeth for ornamentation and symbolic value. Four sites, including Le Roy in France, have yielded perforated human teeth, which confirms the interest in using human bones, and teeth in particular by Aurignacians, for symbolic purposes, which also identified butchered reindeer bones excavated at the site. The study concluded that cut markings on reindeer bones, most likely made by modern humans using flint tools, matched those found on the Neanderthal jawbone. According to the report, a study of ancient butchering techniques suggests that the marks may have resulted from slicing through the geniohyoid muscle, a narrow muscle at the bottom of the oral cavity, to remove the tongue. The marrow from the bones appears to have also been devoured. It is uncertain if a modern human killed the Neanderthal child or if the components were scavenged from a recently deceased Neanderthal. The latter scenario is unlikely, given that fresh bodies would be difficult to acquire. An alternate idea is that the Neanderthal jawbone belonged to a modern human with Neanderthal traits, implying that these two human groups made love rather than war. Therefore, the findings suggest that modern humans may have butchered some Neanderthals in Western Europe. Following environmental catastrophes, modern humans may have recovered faster than Neanderthals and began usurping territory previously occupied by Neanderthals. Some argue that our species may have outsmarted and outcompeted them for resources. According to one scenario, modern humans interbred with them until there were no more Neanderthals remaining. 
Regardless, Europe was ours 40,000 years ago, and the Neanderthal's light was mysteriously quenched. However, many anthropologists contend that the Chateau Perron tool industry may represent a community of Neanderthals who had adopted the culture of the early European modern humans who had established themselves in the surrounding area, which would account for the hybrid culture discovered at the location. According to this theory, these Neanderthal holdouts adopted the technology to thrive in an environment dominated by technologically advanced competition. As we shall now discuss, the major and unavoidable implication of new dating from the Grotte du Rennes is that the single most spectacular and previously commonly referenced pillar of evidence for the presence of complex symbolic behaviour, the Châtelperon industry, among late Neanderthals in Europe, has totally collapsed. There is much dispute over Neanderthal cognitive and behavioural adaptability, particularly during the time when the first anatomically modern humans colonised Western Europe around 40,000 years ago. The discovery of 29 Neanderthal teeth and a temporal bone lends credence to the Chattel Peronian tool's relationship with Neanderthals, which was also confirmed in the French site of Saint Césaire. The Chattel Peronian is a putative Upper Paleolithic industry whose existence is highly debatable. It was believed to be both the sole Upper Paleolithic industrial created by Neanderthals and the earliest Upper Paleolithic industry in central and southwestern France as well as northern Spain. For the past 40 years, the range of grooved and perforated animal teeth, mammoth ivory rings, and other unmistakably decorative or ornamental items discovered during the excavations in the Chateau Peronian levels in the cave of Grotte du Rennes in north-central France have played a pivotal role in discussions of the European Neanderthal populations, suggesting that these populations were actively engaged in a range of highly symbolic behaviours. Despite being effectively unique in the archaeological records of the European Neanderthals, the discoveries have frequently been used to demonstrate that the Neanderthals possessed highly symbolic cultural and cognitive capacities that were closely similar, if not identical, to those of the subsequent modern human populations. But now this theory is being challenged. The Saint Césaire skeleton was linked to a lithic activity in the Châtel Peronien levels. The carbon and nitrogen ratio in the collagen of the human bones of the Saint Césaire skeleton indicate that the individual was primarily a carnivore. However, the skull's finding in a layer of Chattel Peronian tools now indicates that modern humans may have retained the skull as a trophy rather than the tools having been created by the Neanderthals. In addition, after a comprehensive study of the skull, researchers discovered evidence of a half-inch long scar on the right side of the head, the consequence of a violent assault. Given that bone regeneration occurs only two or three weeks after a traumatic event, it is reasonable to conclude that the individual Neanderthal survived the damage for at least a few months, making a direct causal link between the trauma and the Neanderthal's death implausible. Chattel Peronian stone tools unearthed from the St. Césaire site are tiny and have retouched, blunt edges. To achieve the kinetic energy required to penetrate bone, significant acceleration, most likely via hafting to a wooden shaft, would have been required. The St. Césaire cranial injury also adds to the exceedingly tiny number of specimens that provide direct proof that modern humans and Neanderthals employed weapons in instances of interpersonal violence. The Shanidar III Neanderthal from the Middle East is the only other properly known example of interspecies conflict, and it is likely to be older than 50,000 years. This specimen has a gash in the superior margin of the ninth left rib caused by a piercing object that stayed trapped between surrounding ribs until the individual died. It has been speculated, based on the particular characteristics of this injury, that it was caused by a small, sharp spearhead of knife, such as the Chattel Peronian created. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, please check out our many other videos on paleoanthropology and leave a like and a comment. We appreciate your support. Take care.